Everyone, I'm Guy Cocker for Games What You Care. I'm here in London's Theatre District to bring you a first look at Tomb Raider Underworld. It's happening in a cinema just behind us, so let's head in and see what's going on. So Tomb Raider Underworld's just been announced, finally. We kind of knew it was going to be happening eventually. Um, tell us a little bit about the game and, and kind of how it fits into the series. So we've got a, a next-gen engine we built from the ground up, and that just allows us to do so much more with the size of the world, the visual fidelity of the world, how Lara looks, how she moves and just expanding the gameplay in ways that they're true to what you'd expect from a Tomb Raider game but they're also giving you new ways to explore the environment and deal with the challenges um, and in terms of how it fits into the overall arc um, it's very much, it's a story that we're very pleased with and we think it's going to mean a lot to long-term fans uh, of which there are obviously a huge number, um, but at the same time it's going to appeal to new players as well and we think that's that's very important. Tomb Raider Legend, I mean it was a great game, we kind of reset the, the series in a in a serious way. Uh, how difficult is it when you're designing subsequent games to like kind of recapture that but also move it forward a little bit? So in terms of Tomb Raider specifically, I think it's very much a case of looking at what makes a good Tomb Raider game, um, what makes a great Tomb Raider game, and developing from that, we spend a lot of time talking with um, fans, talk, looking at feedback from press, from on, online. And so we've got a very vocal community, which is great. Um, they're very quick to let us know what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. Um, and it's a case of looking at that and then the, the team at Crystal um, have really been given the freedom to explore what it really means to make a next-gen Tomb Raider game. Um, and we're really, really pleased with um, the direction it's going. Mm -hmm. I think there's an element that it's certainly, if you look back at the first Tomb Raiders, I don't think anyone quite predicted exactly how much of an impact they were going to have. And there's a danger that if you consciously try and recreate some of that, you end up with something that, that just doesn't work. It's too obvious and too tacky. So I think the best examples of that, they come from a mix of, of really careful planning and thought and an understanding of, of what, Tomb Raider is and there's an element of, of luck of synchronicity um, game design and game development is a very organic process um, you can start out with a very clear plan and if you're lucky you'll follow out to the letter and it'll be perfect to be honest though a lot of stuff comes out as you're developing you're experimenting you're trying out new things and it's then that you suddenly go this is working we've got those moments um, we do a lot of focus testing um, we're constantly evaluating what it is we're, we're doing and we're trying to make sure that yeah we've got those moments that you go that's a classic Tomb Raider moment um, it's a little bit of luck it's a lot of hard work so what we've done with uh, Underworld is we've looked at what people liked about Legend we've looked at what people liked about Anniversary and yeah that sense of you um, being alone, exploring these places by yourself, being the first person in centuries, um, if not longer in some cases, to see these places. I think that's a key part of Tomb Raider. We are bringing back um, some of the characters from Legend um, in their support function, but it's certainly scaled down from what you saw in previous games. Um, we, we listen to what people say, and um, we're constantly trying to make sure that we can offer people a... what each individual thinks of as their Tomb Raider experience. So for some people, yeah, there are they want that sense of loneliness and isolation and, and hardcore puzzle solving. Other people, to be honest, they haven't got the time or um, you know that's not what they're looking for from games. Um, and I think at times that's a mistake that, that it's very easy to fall into. You make a game um, for only a few people and they may love it because you make a great game, but to be honest, we need to make games that can reach out and appeal to, to, to everyone. Uh, Toby Gard, the, the, the guy that came up with the original Tomb Raider, is now over at Crystal Dynamics in, in the US. It's the US, isn't it? Um, how involved with he is is he these days with the with kind of development of the series itself? Is he is he quite hands on, or is he quite happy to leave um, other people to do it? Um, Toby's an uh, integral part of the team. Um, he's heading up um, their cinematics division, um, so he's making sure that the storytelling. Um, which is a particular interest of, of Toby's. Um, he's making sure that storytelling is as powerful as it can be. So he was involved in uh, very heavily in the initial um, stages of story development, um, and he's you know he's seeing it on a daily basis. It's what he's working on. Um, I um, had lunch with him 
uh, earlier this week actually I was out at, at Crystal um, and yeah he's very much involved we saw a demo of it today one level you're still being quite you know hush hush about what you can and can't talk about when's when's the the game coming out of, and when will we be seeing more on it we feel it's very important that we make um, the best Tomb Raider game that we can make um, and that takes time uh, we don't want to rush something out that isn't going to deliver um, so um, I think we've already announced that it's um, it's going to be um, late 2008. Nothing less than a big statement there, but uh, thanks a lot for your time, and we'll uh, look forward to seeing more of the game soon, hopefully. Thank you. Thanks.